Hello again. We're going to talk about clustering and I'm going to show you some different clustering methods. So uh, with clustering, there's no class attribute. We're just trying to divide the instances into natural groups or clusters. So for instance, imagine the iris data set that we looked at in the last course. Uh, and just imagine deleting the class attribute. Of course, you might remember there's three kinds of irises and in the iris data set, there's 50 of each kind, iris setosis, iris versicolors, and iris virginicas, and the data set gives the petal lengths and petal widths and so on. So if you deleted the class attribute, the question is, could you recover the three classes by clustering the data? And you'll be trying that in the activity after this lesson. There's different kinds of clustering algorithms that produce different sorts of representations of clusters. So uh, one way of thinking about clusters is to imagine disjoint sets. We take the instance space and divide it into sets such that each instance, each part of the instance space, is in just one cluster. Or the clusters might overlap, as shown in the second picture. You might have overlapping clusters. If you've got overlapping clusters, you might have a probabilistic assignment of instances. So A, B, C, D, E are instances, and there are three clusters here. Instance A has got a 0.4 uh, probability of belonging to cluster 1, and a 0.1 probability for cluster 2, and a 0.5 probability for 3. Or fourthly, we might have a hierarchical clustering method. Here the instances are along the bottom, and A and G get clustered together at the bottom level. In fact, you can see the clusters at the bottom level. And then these clusters join together at the next level up, and so on, until at the very top level, all of the data set is just one big cluster. It's called a dendrogram, that kind of tree. Okay, the first algorithm we're going to look at is called k-means. It does iterative distance-based clustering. So first of all, you specify the desired number of clusters. We're going to call that k. And then uh, the algorithm chooses k points at random as cluster centers, and it assigns all the instances in the data set to their closest cluster center. And then it takes each cluster and calculates the centroid of the instances in it. That's the mean of all of the instances. And these centroids are new cluster centers. So it goes back to the beginning and carries on until the cluster centers don't change. At, one, at some point, when you uh, recalculate the cluster centers, you get just the same numbers as you had before. So this algorithm minimizes the total squared distance from instances to their cluster centers. But unfortunately, it's a local minimum, not a global minimum, and you get different results with different random number seeds. So we're going to look at that in Weka. We're going to look at k-means clustering. I've opened the weather data set, and on the cluster panel, I'm going to open simple k-means. And it's got some parameters here, the number of clusters. We set this for two clusters, and uh, we can have different distance functions and the random number seed here. So let's just run it. And here we get two clusters. One's got nine instances and the other got five instances. And the total squared error is 16, 16.2. That's what we're trying to minimize. The thing is that if we run this with a different random number seed, say 11, then we're going to get different clusters. There's six instances in one cluster and eight in another cluster. And here, the total squared error is 13.6. And if we were to do it again with another seed, let's say 12, we get a different clustering again. So going back to the slide, you can see that they, for each different random number seed, we get a different uh, clustering. And uh, that doesn't seem like a very good thing, although maybe it's the data set. Maybe with a more uh, proper data set, uh, we might get better results, more consistent results. But in k-means, it's always dependent on the uh, initial assignment of the cluster center, the initial choice of cluster centers. X-means, also in Weka, is an extended version of k-means. It selects the number of clusters itself, whereas with k-means, you've got to specify that. For x-means, you can specify a minimum and a maximum for this number. Uh, it uses KD trees, which are a sophisticated data structures to make it operate uh, pretty quickly. Unfortunately, though, X means cannot handle nominal attributes. Let's look at another method. EM is a probabilistic clustering method. Uh, it stands for expectation maximization. 
So I'm going to go to the cluster panel and choose EM. And uh, there's uh, some parameters here. Uh, so we get here the we've got here the number of clusters, and uh, that's set to minus one. That means EM will try and determine the number of clusters itself. I'm going to set that to two, and then I'm going to run EM. And here I get two clusters. Uh, and in fact, these are the clusters. So for each of the attribute values, I get a kind of a probability that uh, the outlook is going to be sunny and overcast and rainy in each of the clusters. We get the probability by dividing this by the total here. So given those probabilities, if we had a new instance, we could assign it to, uh, we'd, we could calculate for it the probabilities for each cluster. And actually EM uh, uses as an overall quality measure a thing called the log likelihood. So back to the slide, we've got two clusters with these prior probabilities, and within each cluster we've got the probability of each value for a nominal attribute, and for a numeric attribute we've got the mean and standard deviation. So we've got a, another final clustering method. This is a hierarchical clustering method. It's called Cobweb. Back in Weka, let me just run that Cobweb. Um, it's got some rather magic parameters here. I'm going to choose 0.3. It's a bit of a black art actually using the cobweb. I'm going to run this and I will get a tree which I can visualize uh, on the right click menu. You can visualize the tree and going back to the slide, this is the tree that we get for, uh, for the weather data with 10 clusters. Uh, well, you can see uh, these clusters at the bottom level, and then these clusters at the level above, and then one cluster at the very top. So that's clustering. In clustering, there's no class value. There are different representations of clusters, and different algorithms produce different kind of representations. K-means is the simplest uh, standard kind of clustering method. It's an iterative distance-based uh, uh, method. Uh, and it can take different distance metrics. We were using the Euclidean distance, but you can select different distance metrics in k-means and x-means. It's really hard to evaluate clustering, and we're going to be looking at that in the next lesson. Meanwhile, go and do some clustering with the activity. Uh, have a look at the course text, if you like, and uh, we'll see you in the next lesson. Bye for now.